Hello ladies and gentlemen, scared 204 here bringing you another Minecraft tutorial world update video. In this video we'll be going ahead and taking a look at all the new changes to the tutorial world, basically covering any new vehicles that have been added and all of that fun stuff there. So uh, lots of stuff has changed in the tutorial world and if you look down in the description I have actually included a change log. So all the new vehicles that are built, um, all the kind of major changes in structuring to the tutorial world and everything like that are all listed so you can look at a change log. And uh, you know I plan on doing this for all future tutorial worlds so it would be a nice way for you guys to actually see uh, the changes and be able to go and take a look at them if you are interested in a certain vehicle in particular. Um, in this video, we're going to be covering pretty much most of the vehicles that were changed. Um, hopefully, I don't forget one, but, you know, I might forget one here and there. Uh, lots of new stuff to see and, um, you know, pretty widespread for the most part. We do have a lot of stuff in World War II, of course, uh, mainly with some uh, War Thunder vehicles being put in plots and also some War Thunder vehicles that were in the last version of the tutorial, tutorial world being edited slightly and uh, new designs put, it, put in for them. Um, but a lot of new designs also of some really cool builds I'm really looking forward to sharing with you guys and um, all that fun stuff. But, but without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, move into taking a look at it. And also, if you guys are interested in checking out the world, uh, you can go ahead and download it with the Mediafire link down in the description. And uh, very easy, just extract the save and you'll be able to put it right into your saves folder in your .minecraft folder. Uh, pretty simple and you will have the tutorial world so you guys can take a look at it. Also, the world is in 1.11 So make sure that you are in version 1.11 Because um, if not if you are uh, in a lower version of Minecraft um, Or earlier version I should say then you might experience corruption and stuff like that as shulker boxes and uh, 1.11 only items are used in the world, but you should be able to run it at 1.12 and not have any problems um, anyways, let's go ahead and uh, get started and take a look at our first section of vehicles we're going to be going ahead and taking a look at. So one of the main changes was with the KV series of tanks. Uh, there's a bunch of the KV tanks that were in War Thunder that were added to plots. And currently the uh, Soviet line now actually surpasses our American World War II line in length. Uh, so a lot of KV tanks were added. The KV-1 uh, Zis-5, the KV-2 Mod 1939. KV-85, um, we also have the KV-2 Mod 1940, the KV-1E, and the KV-220. Uh, these were all builds that were added in recently, and uh, in part two, they were also changed. So one of the major changes I made with the KV series of tanks was their chassis and with the um, road wheels. So I made a lot of changes in that front and also some minor changes on some of the different variants. But you can see here we have the KV-2, so we do have a new design tendency for the KV-2. Um, I don't think I'll ever find a definitive design I like for this um, thing. I'm constantly changing it. Uh, but a new design for the KV-2 uh, and the main feature really uh, with the new chassis um, for the new KV series of tanks. Um, we also have the KV-1 over here. As you can see, the KV-1 Zis-5, uh, which is um, seen here. And this is um, kind of a standard, you know, kind of a standard KV um, tank right here. And uh, you can see it has the same kind of chassis to change and everything like that. And for all those KV uh, tanks I mentioned at the beginning of the video, they all have the new chassis put on them and uh, different little detail bits and here and there, um, slight improvements. And that's pretty much going all the way down my Soviet line. But if you look at my Soviet line, it will go all the way down and surpass the American line. Uh, we do have one other uh, tank that we want to take a look at. And uh, that is going to be a IS-1, which was also added to the uh, Soviet lineup. So we have the IS-1 now in a plot and ready to go as a tutorial. So... Uh, another uh, heavy tank and this was a vehicle that was from the war in the war thunder line that got a few modifications to its tracks and stuff like that and is now ready to go as a tutorial venturing down the soviet line a little bit more we stumble across a new design for the t60 the t60 was in a plot in the previous uh world download however this uh version here has seen a little bit of addition some detailing and a few little structural changes on it here and there uh this was a uh, recent vehicle request so i came back to the uh, T60 and kind of uh, revamped it a little bit, uh, made it look a little bit nicer, and um, it's ready to go for a tutorial and to be a uh, request uh, that will be fulfilled by uh, hopefully very soon. Uh, but that's pretty much it for the main stuff of the Soviet lines. As I mentioned, the KV tanks were kind of changed up a bit, but overall that's pretty much the main kind of gist of this line. Going ahead and moving one nation back, we have the uh, German line. So the German lineup is a uh, has seen some more additions. The German World War II section obviously being my longest uh, line of vehicles out of pretty much all of my uh, you know other nations. 
Uh, so we have a new panther. This was a tutorial that was posted um, not too long ago, so I'm not going to go into any detail about that. However, we do have uh, the tigers uh, that have been uh, revamped a little bit and have been brought over from the War Thunder line. Um, so the tigers here, we have the Tiger uh, H1, which is kind of like the earlier version of the tiger. Um, this one had the Zemerit's armor on it and or uh, the Zumerit's armor or something like that. Basically what it was was it was this kind of paste that they put on the armor which prevented uh, mines and uh, better explosive devices from sticking to the surface. Um, so this was a way to kind of counter um, a problem that was with the tank or some, something of that kind of sort. And so the paste was put on it to prevent any objects from sticking to it. Um, so this is the version here. You can see the difference because it has the birchwood um, planks, which kind of represent the Zemerit's armor quite decently with the lines and stuff like that on the uh, tank overall. Uh, we then have the more kind of well-known version of the Tiger, which is the Tiger E. So the Tiger uh, E was obviously the one that was more kind of well-known and um, saw more production and more kind of widespread use with the uh, difference on the back here for the exhaust. Um, you can see that it's different on both sides. That's actually how it was with the two different variants. Um, so this one obviously being the one that more people kind of recognize and more people would probably um, know as the uh, Tiger 1. Our next tank over, we have a design for the Porsche Tiger. I don't know if I ever made a design for the Porsche Tiger. I know I never posted a tutorial on one, but I don't know if I just had a design to see on my world or not. However, the Porsche Tiger has been um, built and uh, it's pretty nice. It was part of the, obviously, the War Thunder line. So I went ahead and revisited it, the tank and made a few adjustments to it here and there and have transferred over to a plot. And uh, it looks really nice. Uh, came out pretty good. Looks like a Porsche Tiger pretty decently and um, overall pretty satisfied with the overall design of it. And uh, that's pretty much the Porsche Tiger. A lot of you guys have also requested a Flak Verveline for quite a while um, with basically the Flak 38 and I have designed it. So many of you guys have probably saw the tutorial I recently posted for the Win which was a basically a Panja 4 with a Flak 38 mounted on top of it and I pretty much took this gun, built it, and used it to kind of go off of and build on the uh, gun on top of the Wurblewin. Um, this is also the same kind of uh, gun or same design I used on the new design for the Rat which obviously hasn't been posted as a, tutor a tutorial yet but um, it is the design that's on the Rat but I just want to show you guys because a lot of you guys have been asking for a Flak 38 so it is ready to go for a tutorial when I finally get around to it. At the end of our log line of uh, German vehicles, we have a few other builds that have been added. Now, these are a little bit in the d different sense that they are captured versions of vehicles. So, we have kind of the German kind of standard kind of color or coloration for tanks, uh, paint scheme uh, with the uh, KV-1B and also a KV-2. KV, uh, um, so, these are our two different uh, captured uh, vehicles obviously the KV-1 and the KV-2 here and they are slightly different in certain senses here a little bit of different uh, Details additions to it to make the tank stand out a little bit more besides just have being a different color overall and uh, The KV-2 you can especially see it had this little basket mounted on the back here and some jerry cans on the side and stuff So again, you know a little bit different and uh, you know stands out as being a different tank But different capture designs and stuff like that for these vehicles we also have a captured finish uh, KV-1B uh, as well and this one is in a kind of green, brown, and white camouflage from the finish um, arm armored forces. Uh, going ahead and continue on we have a captured Churchill which is pretty much a uh, Churchill that's been completely you know, silvered out, grayed out and it's got some jerry cans on the back here and um, a few little different things here and there, but overall mostly the, the same kind of Churchill design, but you know again with that German touch to it We also have the Wind, which came out as a tutorial recently So I'm not gonna really cover that too much But the uh, Wind right there and we also have a new kind of uh, weapon I just built the uh, Rakuten Werfer 43 Pupkin or Pupchin, which was a basically imagine like a Panzer Shrek uh, in a artillery or kind of like a f uh, field gun type uh, configuration uh, not many of these were built just because of the fact it was very cumbersome and kind of annoying to carry around and deploy and it was a lot easier just to grab a you know rocket launcher and shoot it. Uh, they both shot the same projectile in 88 millimeter uh, rocket and uh, just an interesting little piece here and a result of uh, pictures and stuff of it being towed by like a Kettencrad and all that stuff. So cool stuff and a cool little uh, request uh, that I was able to complete for somebody. Uh, recently so really cool little design there, but that's gonna do it for our German lineup. Let's move on to our uh, next lineup of vehicles 
So uh, continuing on, we have a few tanks that have been finally added to the British lineup. And these are tanks that were in the War Thunder tech tree, but they have finally been transferred over. Uh, nothing real fancy about these, just the Churchill Mark IV, the Churchill Mark III, and also the A33 Elixir. Uh, tanks that were slightly modified, I think, here and there. I don't think I've made really any huge changes to the tanks, but they're pretty much pretty standard um, from, you know, the last update. But I just wanted to tell you guys that they are now in plots now um, in our uh, UK lineup of armored vehicles. The last World War I slash World War II ground vehicle um, that we have complete is the Tsar tank, which was something that was extremely interesting and weird to make. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know what the Tsar tank is, it is one of the weirdest tanks you'll probably find out there. Um, it had these two giant spoked wheels, like bicycle wheels almost, that were connected up to kind of like this T-shaped uh, kind of chassis here that had a wheel that went down here and kind of like two branching arms here that had cannons in the sides and uh, it it's just a mess. <laughs> it, it is really an ugly looking tank, but I'm actually kind of happy with the way it came out. It's gigantic. Like you, This isn't like overscaled or anything like that. This is at two scale with everything else. That's just how massive this thing actually would be. Uh, but yeah, it was, a, it was a prototype or kind of an idea concept tank that really ne never went anywhere, which I guess is a, kind of a good thing because it's so ugly, but a uh, really interesting vehicle nonetheless and a cool vehicle that hopefully we can get out sometime soon as a tutorial. When it comes to the Modern Warfare lineup of ground vehicles, not a lot has really uh, kind, of, kind of been made in this section, to say the very least, uh, especially for ground vehicles. We have a design for the Panhard ERC-90, uh, which is a uh, France uh, armored car, um, but really nice design for it. I love the, the uh, camo scheme on it. Uh, came out really nice, and I'm overall really happy with the way it looks. Uh, but really nice, it's good to get another France vehicle as we do not have that many uh, French vehicles. So nice another addition to our uh, French lineup of vehicles. We also have a new South African vehicle, uh, which came out as a tutorial already, the Rattel. Um, so nothing, no point really covering that any further. Uh, but it was a really cool Patreon request and a really fun vehicle to uh, make. So another really cool Modern Warfare edition um, that's already been posted as a tutorial. All right, guys. So moving on to our World War II aviation lineup. This uh, here has easily seen a lot of change um, happen to it and a lot of new designs uh, that have come from it. Um, so one of the huge lines that saw a lot of readjusting was the German line. Uh, pretty much every aircraft and every plot was adjusted in some way in the fact that a lot of aircraft were moved down and um, plots were uh, changed up because I went ahead and I rebuilt a lot of my uh, German stuff, uh, mainly focusing on like the Ju-88, which definitely needed a huge redo. And when I actually looked at the scale and the count of the other one, it was over three to one in scale, which was ridiculous. It has the Ju-88 is not, it was way overscaled compared to my other vehicles. So I went ahead and completely redid the Ju-88 and have, uh, you know, created a nice new design for it, which looks fantastic. It's got a really nice kind of color. Uh, with highlights of yellow and um, also a little insignia up here, which looks fantastic. Uh, overall, extremely happy with the new design for the Ju-88 and uh, just an overall really nice design that came out uh, really good. So I'm really happy about that. But uh, because the aircraft is a lot smaller than the previous one, all the plots had to be readjusted. So all the German aircraft have been scooted down. I also removed a little Nazi helicopter thingy my bobber. Uh, that was built in a live stream a long long time ago. That was really stupid and just a ugly looking vehicle So I just completely got rid of it. Maybe I'll build it again someday, but I got rid of it and uh, moved my ME 26 um, 3 down or sorry 262 and uh, Also built you know moved some my JU8 or JU87 down and all these aircraft were kind of moved down a bit here um, we also have a new kind of uh, updated version of the Comet the ME 163 which hasn't come out as a tutorial but a kind of revised uh, version and stuff like that that's been saying my world um, so you know just kind of tweak some things here and there and made it a little bit better so when I finally get to the tutorial for it it will uh, be perfect uh, continuing on all these aircraft are pretty much the same the BF 109 the uh, duck and the HE 111 also saw a bit of uh, redesign as well I pretty much rebuilt it from the ground up as I wasn't happy with the um, original design I had. I think I had the HE 111 built quite a while ago, probably about maybe eight months ago. Never got around to a tutorial for it. Um, <clears throat> but I went ahead and uh, basically rebuilt it completely, 
despite it not having a tutorial out for it and it came out really nicely shaping detail of course really nice all the way around for it and i'm um, overall really happy with the new he 111. Uh, continuing on, we have a bit of a modified uh, Horton 229, which was also a vehicle that never saw a tutorial, uh, but it was built on my world, and I just went ahead and kind of streamlined things and uh, made it a little bit nicer overall in shape and all that. So, again, nothing too crazy happened with that, but, you know, a little bit of redesign there. And uh, other than that, all the other German aircraft that have uh, been on here are pretty much all still here, and they've just been kind of adjusted and moved, down, moved down a little bit. So the German line is nice and uh, looks really nice. It's got a lot of really nice aircraft in it and it's all kind of souped up, kind of what I was doing for the um, American line, which I'm still kind of currently in the process of uh, working on. Um, so that came out really nice all the way around. Really happy with the new German line. And uh, let's go ahead and move on to our uh, next line, which is actually going to be the British, which the British actually saw some adjustments and some uh, new aircraft and kind of stuff going on there. So moving on to our British aircraft, the British aircraft of course have seen a lot of um, changes to it. Uh, we have a new Hawker Typhoon that came out as part of a uh, Patreon request and you guys have all seen the tutorial for it. So I'm not going to go into great detail before it, but the Hawker Typhoon now has a plot and it's pretty much the first aircraft you see here in the British lineup. We also have a uh, new design for the DH-98 Mosquito, which was a air aircraft that definitely needed a huge update. Much like the Ju-88, it was way overscaled and uh, quite frankly just ugly. And this new Mosquito does a lot of justice. Really nice shaping and a nice little kind of camo scheme to go with it. Overall, really happy with the new Mosquito and the new Typhoon. Uh, two really nice aircraft, but that's pretty much the main kind of things that happen with the uh, British line. Um, you can see it's a bit of a mess right now as I'm in the process of rebuilding stuff like the uh, Spitfire and the Swordfish and trying to uh, remove old builds and get those cleared out. But everything from the Lancaster down the line like the Blenheim and uh, the Whirlaway and um, you know the Lylander, all these are good and plus the Lylander also has a plot now. I don't think that was in the last uh, tutorial world update so it has a plot now for it and everything like that. But uh, these are all going to be uh, hopefully adjusted and the price scoot down a little bit with the changing in size of the other builds here and all that fun stuff but um, some cool additions to our British line and you know my goal is to slowly kind of work on these factions and kind of redo their aircraft and get them back up to you know my modern kind of you know style of building and real nice stuff and everything with that while uh, working on it so probably the next line up here will be the Soviet Union which definitely needs some uh, some love for sure um, also in addition the French uh, aviation line now has a start so we have the huge orange looking bomber interwar bomber that was um kind of just sitting in the just a random space in the tutorial world that's finally been put into a plot um it's called the fairman f2223 so if you're wondering what the name of it is uh very interesting aircraft to say the very least uh, but one of those interwar bomber designs and everything like that and then over here we have our first first ever uh uh, you know, single seat uh, fighter plane for the French as well, which is the uh, D520, if I remember correctly. Yeah, the D520. Uh, so we knew, uh, or basically our first ever France uh, fighter, which is also a cool uh, addition as well. And it was another request somebody had, so went ahead and built it, and hopefully we'll be seeing it sometime soon. Uh, but that's it for our World War uh, Two, World War One lines of aircraft. Let's go ahead and move into the modern warfare section. Going ahead and continuing on, uh, we have the Modern Warfare section. I don't believe the uh, aircraft you can see right in front of us, the YF-23, was actually in a plot or even built. I'm not 100% sure. I'd have to actually go back and check here when this video, when the video actually came out for the YF-23. Um, but uh, yeah, so this is in a plot now and there's a tutorial for it as well. Pretty cool aircraft and a uh, nice little addition to our lineup here. Uh, we also have the Chinook, which I know I did cover in the uh, last tutorial world update. However, this now has plots for it, so it's ready to go as a tutorial. Uh, really nice design, really happy with the way those came out. Uh, we do have a new, brand new aircraft that's been completely redesigned, and you guys are probably going to love this one. A lot of you guys asked for me to build a Viper, which was a uh, build you guys probably saw a long time ago on the military base and uh, a few of my videos before. Uh, but this is a completely revamped design for the Viper, which just looks absolutely sick. Uh, I love the way it lo looks. We have, um, you know, uh, basically air-to-air -air missiles, Hellfire missiles, and uh, just all the all the fun stuff that a Viper can have for payload-wise. Uh, absolutely beautiful uh, looking helicopter. And uh, we have the landed version with the weighted 
uh, basically blades and you know the tilted blades up here for the in-flight version overall really happy with the way these came out they look fantastic um so really happy with that helicopter uh we also have uh the fire scout uh uav which uh was built and it's been sitting on my world for quite a while but it now finally has a plot so i was finally i was able to finally build a little plot for it and uh it's a nice little uh dinky little helicopter and all that stuff uh, we then went at we then have another really cool aircraft that I just built yesterday actually, which was the uh, Reaper drone, uh, so the or the Predator drone, whatever you want to call it, uh, the MQ9 I believe, uh, and it's absolutely fantastic. Detail wise, shaping and just the payload on it is just absolutely gnarly. Uh, so of course we have the in flight and the landed version here. Uh, overall, I really love this UAV. It looks super sick, and um, I can't wait to actually do a tutorial for it. Because I love the way it looks so much. Um, so that's really cool there. But that's pretty much it for our modern um, kind of uh, aircraft here for the uh, US. And lots of redos to be done with these aircraft. But um, that's all to come in time. Uh, we also have the uh, Russia Soviet Union that also saw some really cool upgrades. And we'll pretty much actually say additions, not really upgrades. Uh, so we went ahead and built a MI. Uh, 17 which was a another vehicle request somebody had and I went ahead and built it this thing looks freaking awesome I am so happy with the way this helicopter came out uh, the just with the blades and everything like that and just the the shaping this one you can see is equipped obviously rocket pods off the wing off both sides of it which again looked absolutely fantastic and I'm just overall really happy with the way this helicopter looks it's fantastic and you can see the in-flight version is pretty much the same as the landed version as the uh, landing gear does not retract from my knowledge i look looking at pictures and reference and all that stuff so uh but really cool overall really love the way it came out as an aircraft it's a super nice design and uh, again you can see both the landed and in flight versions um we also have the uh ka60 which was a experimental helicopter i believe i don't think they really enter mass production i think there's only two made uh, but this is a Patreon request, so it'll be coming out by the end of this month. Uh, really nice helicopter, utility helicopter uh, design overall. Really love the way it came out. Uh, kind of gives me like a Kamachi or something kind of like vibe like that. Uh, and again, the landed version here with the landing gear extracted and um, also the weighted blades uh, visually shown. So again, two really nice helicopters and a couple new helicopters which have been added, which just, you know, fantastic because a lot of you guys have been asking for helicopters but a lot of cool additions to our modern warfare aircraft all right guys so moving on a lot of you guys probably remember in the last uh, tutorial world update where i was working on trying to move uh mini ships out of the area they were in to give me space to build oversized aircraft um as the uh b36 peacemaker over there uh, needed an oversized plot because it couldn't fit in my standard uh, modern warfare aircraft plots so uh, basically the mini ships have been slowly getting transferred over. I've been working on a lot of redesigns for ships and everything like that and slowly deleting them uh, from the lineup as you can see. So basically all the ships you see right here are still on my list to kind of revamp, um, maybe change a little bit. I'm not sure exactly between the uh, a few of these ships as I think they are pretty decent but I'll probably make some changes and uh, fix some stuff overall and probably make them better obviously. Uh, but these are all ships that will probably be redone. However, moving on over to our actual mini ship line, we have a lot of cool additions to the line. Um, a lot of the ships here you probably remember from the last tutorial world update, the um, Issei and the uh, um, Kanaski class uh, ships, two ships that will be hopefully coming very soon. Uh, a tutorial recently came out for Congo, so Congo has um, been recently done, which is nice. Uh, we also have the Sharn Horse, which, is, which was built as a request by somebody. Um, so the Sharn Horse has been added, which is very nice uh continuing on we have uh obviously the u-boat which was done in a tutorial we also have the enterprise which was done as a tutorial uh we also have the west virginia which was transferred over to a plot i think i covered this in the last uh, tutorial world update but the west virginia has been transferred over uh we also have a new redesign for the atlanta class which came out really good compared to the last one so really happy with that nice new atlanta class uh, the Yamato is now in a plot as well. Continuing on, we have the two different versions of the uh, Barnegat, Barnegat class uh, seaplane tender. We have basically the USS Tim Baller, which was a later kind of version of it. And then we also have the earlier version, which was the USS uh, Barnegat. Um, so this was like kind of like the lead ship of the class, and it was a little bit different. 
Um, so you can see the seaplanes on here, and this one doesn't really have it on there, but it's, um, you know, both they both serve the same role as a seaplane tender. Uh, going ahead and moving on to our next ship here, we have HMS Hood, which was a, another request by somebody that was finally um, done uh, from our, uh, basically, you know, line of request. Uh, really nice, love the way the hood came out. Um, you know, overall fantastic, so really nice. And of course, with Hood, we couldn't uh, go without doing a redesign for the Bismarck. So the uh, KMS Bismarck has also seen a redo, and it looks fantastic. Um, instead of just the hull markings, you know, with the, the white and black stripes going just for the hull, it actually goes into the superstructure, and it looks really nice and flush, and uh, I love the way it came out. Looks just absolutely fantastic. I love the new uh, design for the Bismarck. Um, but overall, that's it for mini ships, and that's pretty much going to wrap up everything i don't think there's anything else really left for us to cover for this update uh, a lot of new stuff though that was added and um you know overall really you know happy to get some stuff done a lot of requests by people were getting done and uh, a lot of progress been on the world so i decided to go ahead and release a new download as there were so many new vehicles added um anyways guys hope you guys did enjoy this uh kind of show around of the world feel free to download for yourselves link down in the description you guys can look at all the stuff and more detail that we covered in this video um, if you guys, uh, you know, obviously do download the world, I do ask that you guys give me credit for any vehicles, if they, even if they aren't posted as tutorials, as they are still my designs. Um, it's much appreciated and um, goes a long way in uh, helping me out with the channel and everything like that. So uh, be sure to give me credit if you do use these designs on your worlds and stuff before their tutorials are even posted for them. And uh, overall, just enjoy the world. Have fun on it. Take a look at the vehicles. Um, I think in our last count, uh, somebody did. We have over 800 something vehicles on this world currently, uh, tutorialed and untutorialed. So, uh, pretty crazy to think about. So, anyways, enjoy the tutorial world and the 30, or probably actually more, more like about 40 new vehicle designs um, that are with it. Anyways, see you guys in the next tutorial. Hope you guys did enjoy. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary204, and I'll see you guys next time.